Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my simulation community. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to Kino Training Systems. I'm Kino Thomas, and today we are going to talk about a trip that we're going to be planning from Norfolk, Virginia, and it will be going to Savannah Hilton Head International Airport in Georgia. So we're leaving Norfolk, Virginia, and we are going to Savannah, Georgia. I think that's like the, is that the golf? I think that's like the golf capital of the world, or they make the uh, Gulf Stream there. I think something like that. Uh, I've been there a couple times. Uh, at any rate, uh, we start out at Norfolk International, where our last flight terminated. And um, again, never ever ever leave the airport without an airport diagram, uh, because of the wealth of information that it offers. Here we're looking at the Norfolk. International Airport uh, Airport Diagram, we have the ATIS 127.15, we have the tower frequency 120.8, ground control is on 121.9 and clearance delivery is on 118.5. Uh, this is class Charlie airspace and normally most airports when, and I'm, this is not an end all be all, but most airports when you have a separate ground control clearance delivery normally it's a, a, a class Charlie or a class Bravo airspace on you know that's like the I guess the uh, what do they call it it's not a satellite airport it's the main airport until I find a better word at any rate uh, we will have the options of taking off from runway 23 one four uh, up, 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 up. three two or runway five, so there's a uh, two major run, two main run or two runways, and we have the option of departing in four different directions. We don't know which one yet, but uh, we have all our taxiways here. Um, I'm gonna set this up. We're not gonna know where we're gonna start out at, but uh, at any rate, we keep our air, air airport diagram handy. Um, because we don't know where the simulator is going to start us out, but we'll have our airport diagram and we will not have to taxi to the active runway after listening to ATIS and uh, listening and finding out what the active runway is. So let's talk about our route of flight. Uh, let me just zoom out a little bit here. All right. Our route of flight is, uh, let's see here, let's zoom this out. All right. All right, um, this is going to be, uh, it's going to be a VFR flight, but we're going to follow an IFR flight plan. Um, we would do this for like training purposes. Maybe somebody needs to get current. Maybe they need to shoot an approach. Even on a VFR day, you can still shoot the approach under hood and it'd be legal as long as we have a safety pilot. Um, but uh, just uh, number one, so we'll say VFR. Uh, but we will be filing an IFR flight plan and flying it as such, at, like an IFR flight plan. Uh, the Embraer 170 slash alpha. Uh, the suffix A is our special equipment. It's our special equipment suffix. Suffix. The true airspeed will be 315 knots. Departure point is Kilo Oscar Romeo Foxtrot. Uh, this is a simulate. This is a simulation. So our departure time. We don't plug anything there. Uh, our cruising altitude is going to be, I want to use a higher altitude. So we're going to use 16,000 feet. All right. And our route of flight is going to be CVI VOR, which is co-filled VOR. The frequency is 114.6. Victor 1, Charleston VOR, and then Victor 437. Uh, is our route. Now, um, as we travel along Victor 1, we're going to run over a couple extra uh, VORs in between uh, Cofield and Charleston. Those VORs are Kingston VOR, which is India, Sierra Oscar, uh, Grand Strand, which is Charlie Romeo Echo, uh, and then uh, Charleston 113.2. Five, and we'll see that as we go along in our briefing. So let's uh, bup, 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 bup. 
let's uh, talk about it, our, our trip. Okay, again, uh, like I said before, Norfolk is class Charlie airspace. We have the control frequency, ATIS. Um, field elevation is 27 feet. It's a lighted airport. Uh, 90 feet above sea level. And the ocean is like right there. So, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to proceed southwest to our first VOR. Okay, this is Cofield VOR. The frequency is 114.6. Uh, here's the Morse code identification and uh, Raleigh is the uh, controlling flight service station in that area. We could turn up the we could turn up uh, the volume on the, the on the nav radio and we could listen if we needed to talk to them if we needed to get a weather update if we needed information uh, we can get it from the flight service station via uh, by transmitting on 122.1 .1. that's what they receive on you don't receive on that frequency and um, and and we would listen over the VOR Victor one so we'll be departing Coalfield or Charlie Victor India on radio 218 and we can see Victor one depicted here there's a block here there's 69 nautical miles between the nav aids now the bad part about this is uh, we're at the bottom of the sectional and so uh, just for our students well how do I know how to continue well if you just look at the edge the rim of the uh, topographical data um, you can look here you can just follow along and it says join Charlotte so and it says this repeatedly if all you got to do is just well not repeatedly just a couple times but no matter where you are in this chart, um, when you get to the end, uh, it will just give you the information. Join Charlotte. So we go to Charlotte. Bang, zoom out, and we come in here. We got to find Victor One, which we did. Victor One's right there. And then, if we were navigating northbound, and we say, "Hey, what's the next section we need? To, we need to use." It says joins Washington, the Washington sectional. So we continue down, uh, and Coalfield is here up top on the Washington sectional, and then our next nav aid is here, Kingston, India Sierra Oscar. Now the block told us and this is two actually two routes Victor 1 and Vi and Victor 472 but it's telling you Victor 1 and the block represents the distance so there's 69 miles between um, Coalfield and Kingston VOR the VOR is positioned northeast of Kingston Regional Airport so for any type of in-flight emergencies and everything like that anything like that um, we have enough runway uh, this is a big airport it's not as opposed to say like a small airport like this okay probably is not a very large runway there but when we have blocking like this as opposed to this this is circular and you can look at the legend and go into the details but this is a hard service runway definitely and I know that uh, there's 11,500 foot runway there depicted by 115. So we always want to be thinking about what if something goes wrong, you know. So along our first leg of our route, 69 miles, uh, we have a hard surface runway there. We're going to continue on Victor 1. And we'll hear a little clicker noise. We'll keep coming down. Victor 1, Victor 1, Victor 1 to our next nav a which is Grand Strand. Grand Strand has a 6,000 foot runway so along our route of flight these are like hey look our nav aids are kind of bringing us near airports uh, so you know if something goes wrong and, a, and another thing we need to be looking at um, are airports that are kind of closest to our route of flight uh, with 
you know, enough runway to be able to take us. So Kingston, Grand Strand, And after Grand Strand, I need to pick up the Victor One. There we go. So we're coming along, coming along. And again, we're going to be at like, I think I put 16,000 feet in the flight plan. And that's going to bring us into Charleston. Another, well, we got 9,000. We have a 9,000 foot runway there. And this will bring us past Beaufort the Marine Corps Air Station uh, this and Merit so it's Marine Corps slash Merit okay you can consult your air, your airport facility directory to find out what the deal is with that airport whether it's actually a military base or if it's a joint military and civil base um, and then that brings us into Savannah we close out with uh, Macon flight service station uh, but once we cancel IFR we could cancel with the tower Savannah Hilton Head International Airport the airport identifier is Sierra Alpha Victor control tower frequency 119.1 mm, excuse me there uh, let's see here there's a star next to the lighting so uh, that would lead me to believe that that tower is not in operation or lighting is not 24 hours in operation uh, let's see here and there's a star next to the control tower frequency uh, that's another hey they're not in business 24 hours a day seven days a week 50 feet above sea level part-time lighting we have a 9,300 foot runway and Unicom is on 122.905 there if we want to call ahead we can call ahead, see what the real weather picture is, or if there's anything special, if I need it, I don't know, a rental car or something like that, you know. Um, there are some fixed base operators probably more than likely listening to that frequency. And off, we have actually Hilton Head Airport, which is probably like a little smaller regional airport. It's Class D airspace, and they have a 4,300 foot runway. Uh, along this route of flight, I'm concerned about Buford 2, the Buford 2 MOA. Now, on an IFR flight plan, um, you could call, the, you could just let, ask the controllers, you know, once we start slinging around uh, Charleston, you're being aware because Victor 437 is our next airway that we're going to take into Savannah, so I would ask the controllers is Buford 2 MOA uh, is going to be a factor for our flight. Now, from what I think I looked at, uh, it only goes up to 10,000 feet. We're going to be at 16. Um, but we may be asked to descend by the approach controllers. Uh, what's that, Buford 2? Let me just zoom out a little bit. So yeah, this is the lateral limits of the Buford 2 uh, military operations area. Uh, our Victor 437 actually passes over it, and uh, so maybe they may even park us below 3,000 feet because MOAs exclude airspace 3,000 feet and below according to this uh, depiction. So 3,000 feet and below is not a factor. And let's just look at some information here. All right, now what we have at the header here is the MOA name, military operation area's name, altitude, time of use, controlling agency or controlling uh, facility and frequencies. So Buford 2 MOA. Okay, now this is saying something different. All right. It's intermittent, four daylight hours per day, two days per month, by NOTAM. Okay, so two days out of the month, this, th this thing is active. So on the day that we happen to be flying through, we would ask about it to see if it's active. And when it is active, uh, the altitude uh, ranges from 100 feet above ground level to 7,000 feet. 
So I don't know, maybe the controllers will keep us at 8,000 and above uh, on days that, you know, this thing is active the two days per month. But that is the only special use airspace that I, I saw along our route of flight. If you picked up anything, uh, just email me so I can update this, but I didn't really see anything else uh, affecting the route of flight. So again, let's go back to my flight plan here. All right, so okay, it's a VFR flight plan, but we're, we're actually going to fly to IFR. If we're going to file IFR, then we would put that X the appropriate box. Uh, Embraer 170A, 315 knots, uh, Norfolk, 16,000 feet, uh, Cofield VOR, Victor 1, Charleston VOR to Victor 437, and we saw how Victor 437 passed through the Buford 2 MOA. Uh, Savannah, Savannah, I abbreviated this, Savannah Hilton Head International, Savannah, Georgia, one hour plus 30 minutes simulation flight, five hours of fuel on board, no alternates. Uh, again, if you've seen any of my previous uh, uh, flight planning videos, uh, you know what this is all about, so I won't cover it. Number on board, colored aircraft will be the same, and we would close our, our VFR flight plan out with making if we we're flying this VOR but when we terminate IFR the IFR trip with the tower then they will be like okay he landed the tower definitely knows that Embraer or whatever your tail number is November 469 Charlie Alpha November 31 Sierra Delta whatever all right they know that this aircraft because this is what you would have in real life you would have a tail number all right and so uh all right, let's uh, just look at, all right. So Savannah, Hilton Head International has two precision approach runways. I like using the precision approach runways because it's just, uh, to me, it, it just eases the workload. You kind of know where you're going. Uh, you can, you, it's great for flight planning because you know before you come in now, Charleston is our last VOR before we get to our, our destination, and we can see radial 253, which is southwest of the station, uh, the navigation station, just brings us along here. So that's not Victor 437, uh, I don't believe, uh, but we can see, uh, yeah, because 437 actually goes to the VOR. So this is a little bit north of Victor 437. For our situational awareness now if runway one is available to land on because i thought i could like kind of change up but the simulator's like no once they pick a runway that's it you can shoot an approach but you're going to circle the land and so i'm just trying to cut down on the confusion with the flight management system uh, a couple things about savannah hilton head international the eight is frequency is one two three point seven five uh, approach control 120.4, the tower 119.1, ground control 121.9, clearance delivery 119.55, Unicom 122.9 or 5. Alright, so uh, we could either be varying our vector around, which is probably going to happen, or if we like uh, the initial approach fix, Simba, Charlie, India, November. Is that a J? Let's take a look. Let's zoom in, boys and girls. No, I believe that's an I. But it looks like that I kind of extends down a little bit more like a J. But Simba, Charlie, India, November, Bravo, Alpha. Uh, in order to find that, we would probably just home in on the northeastern radial 060, bring it into 14 DME, and we could fly to 14 DME arc at 2000, swing around. Uh, to uh, land at runway one, I think it was. Yeah, ILS localized one. Um, if it was an IFR trip, once we got into it, once we got established, we could step down. We stayed at 2000, but straight in. Uh, 
ILS approach decision height as at 239 feet, which puts us 200 feet above the threshold. Uh, if it was just a localizer, we didn't have a glide slope, we could come down to four, four, 440 if we're doing the uh, straight end localizer. And if we were circling to approach any other runway, 520, 520 is the lowest we could come down to. Uh, the other option is the Look, the high ILS or localizer runway 10. All right, uh, let's see here. We didn't mention the localizer frequency, but you can go back. Um, and I'd have it plugged in before I even approaching this airport if that's what I was going to use. But these, we, this is just information we kind of go over and we just hang on to because we do not know which runway we're going to be landing on. So these are nine times out of ten the the one of two active runways. Now, if you have a whole approach plate booklet, we have all the approaches we could use. But uh, here is a airport diagram of Savannah. We have the ADIS, tower frequency, all the frequencies. Like I always say, there's a wealth of information in the airport diagram, and it also helps you navigate about the airport. Um, we are going to go to the terminal, definitely. So whatever runway that we land on, um, we're going to go to the terminal. That is the plan. And that's pretty much it uh, for the route. Now what I always like to do is I like to look at the IFR chart as well. So we start out in Norfolk. Again, it's depicted. You can see Norfolk International. The airport inf information, Victor 1, uh, we have a minimum in route altitude of 2,500 and a MOCA, minimum obstruction clearance altitude of 1,600. Uh, again, uh, Coalfield. Raleigh Flight Service Station is a controlling agency. Victor One. Kingston. Victor One. Grand Strand. Victor 1 coming down. Now again, when we need to know, okay, well, we're running out of chart. What's the next chart? Well, at this point, we need to go to L24. And let's go to L24. Okay, now L24, we need to look for Victor 1. Alright, Victor 1 should be Now, we left L35 and this tells you the chart overlaps L25, 35, and 36. So along the top of the chart, we should pick up Victor 1. So we'll go to one side this fill the range and we'll just slowly Spartanburg, Chesterfield, hmm. I don't see Victor 1, hmm, it says the overlap charge, alright, 2536, this area overlaps Victor uh, L25, L35, 36, so Victor 1 should be out here, so no problem, let's just kind of back out a little bit, South Carolina, okay, I found it, alright, uh, Victor 1's coming in over here, I just had to zoom out a little bit and just take a look, and this will happen as you do your planning, but Victor 1 comes down, and Charleston is our next. So the thing is, is 
you gotta just kind of just scan when we're switching charts and that's the little tricky part you know when charts overlap we got to kind of like just scan and like okay cause I had to kind of look at okay Florence I saw Chesterfield uh, Spartanburg which is South Carolina um, and I said okay well let's just drag it over a little bit and go to the eastern portion and then I came down and I saw Victor 1 alright so we're back on track here Charleston VOR and then we're going to take Victor 437 and as I discussed before here is the, the brown dashed lines this is the military operations area and our route of flight is passing through this area um, and then we have Savannah Hilton Head International Airport so um, you're gonna need more than one chart for this uh, you're gonna need at least two whether you just use VFR or sectional charts or the low altitude and route chart so um man yeah, that's pretty much it um, Norfolk International to Savannah Hilton Head International if you have any questions comments concerns or if there's anything that you feel I needed to cover uh, so we can revise this revise this video and make it better for everybody uh, just let me know I thank you guys for watching and uh, I look forward to uh, doing this simulated flight with you guys have a good evening